So we talked about the relationship between delta G and K. We're going to once again look at that relationship, but we're going to extend our approach of looking at the relationship with, from the point of view of delta H and delta S. And specifically, what I want to remind you is that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. That's the master equation of thermodynamics that tells you about spontaneity. We already determined that delta G is equal to negative RT ln of K. So if we substitute delta G with delta H minus T delta S, we're going to have the following relationship. And right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate for the ln of the equilibrium constant by dividing both sides by negative RT. And when I do that, I end up with the following relationship. ln of K equals negative delta H over RT plus delta S over R. If you rearrange this ever so slightly, you start seeing something very familiar. Specifically, ln of K equals negative delta H over R times 1 over T plus delta S over R. This has specifically the format of a linear equation where the value of y is the ln of the equilibrium constant and the value of x is the inverse temperature. Now in this case, this, by the way, this equation looks a lot like the Arrhenius equation. Just be careful, this has big K, which represents equilibrium constant, not little k, that's the rate constant. All right, so this is the equilibrium constant, ln of the equilibrium constant. And the slope now is guaranteed to equal delta H of the system divided by R, and the y-intercept is um, guaranteed to be the entropy divided by R. So I'm going to show you an example where we use the two-point equation version of the Van Hoff equation, and then we'll look at the entire plot as a whole. So like any good old line, you could in essence, <clears throat> isolate the slope, right? Move m times x to the left side of the equation. And the idea is that you could pick any two data points. You could pick temperature 1 and equilibrium constant 1. And then you could pick temperature 2 and equilibrium constant 2. And the point is that when you isolate for the y-intercept, what you have here on the left side, add equal what you have here on the right side because they both have to equal the same y-intercept. And so you end up equating those two portions of the equation to each other. If you subtract ln of k1 from both sides and subtract delta h over r t2 from both sides, you end up with the following relationship. Subtracting logs from each other is the same thing as combining the logs and dividing the insides together. And you could also factor out the negative delta H over R from both of these fractions to give you 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. This is the two-point format of the Van Hoff equation, very similar to the two-point formula of the Arrhenius equation. Uh, things to be said, delta H is in kilojoules per mole, R is in joules per mole Kelvin. So when you perform these calculations, you got to make sure to change either delta H to joules per mole or to change R to kilojoules per mole Kelvin, either or. Okay, so let's show you an example. So a reaction has the following uh, equilibrium constants. So I'm giving you two sets of equilibrium constants, and I'm telling you the corresponding temperatures of those equilibrium constants. We want to use that to find the thermodynamic parameters of this reaction, and I believe we're going to go after all of them. All right, so we use the equation. We're going to use the equation to find out delta H first, because that's uh, literally the, the slope of this two-point format, right? So what I would recommend is that you input the values the way they are. K2 is 3.46 times 10 to negative 5, and its corresponding temperature is 298, right? So you have K2 and T2. Make sure that you don't swap the order by mistake. K1 is 7.78 times 10 to negative 7, so that goes on the bottom. And T1 is the 273, which is right here. All right, so what I recommend is that you just go ahead and calculate what those values are. So ln of this fraction is equal to 3.79489. 1 over 298 minus 1 over 273 is negative 3.073 times 10 to negative 4. And right now, I would say solve for delta H. 
multiply by negative 8.3145 and divide by negative 3.073 times 10 to the negative 4. Notice that your Kelvins will cancel out. The value you're going to get initially will be in joules per mole. So don't forget at this point to divide by 1,000 to get your proper value of delta H in units of kilojoules per mole. All right, so that's the first thing. Second thing is that this is, after all, based on a line. So we could use the equation of the line to figure out the value of delta S. Uh, and right now you can pick either K1 or K2. It doesn't matter which one you use, but you're going to have to use its corresponding temperature as well. So it looks like I use K2 in this process, 3.46 times 10 to negative 5. So I also use 298 Kelvin for the temperature. And since I already know the value of delta H, I input that value in here, divided by the value of R. Mind you that both of them are in units of joules per mole. Okay, so that will give us two values, negative 10.27 for the logarithm, negative 41.45 for the slope, times 1 over the temperature. And what we need to do now is just solve for delta S over R by adding 41.45 from both sides and multiplying both sides by R, in other words, 8.3145. And that will yield the value of the entropy, 259.2 joules per mole Kelvin. So that's one way to do it. Now, the other way that this could actually take place is with data points and actually a table of data points where you're looking at multiple equilibria or multiple equilibrium constants at various temperatures. And so what you end up doing is taking the natural log of the equilibrium constant, so this is ln of big K, and you change the temperature to Kelvin, and then you divide one with the temperature in Kelvin. And I would recommend that you do all of this in Excel. Don't, don't, don't do it by hand. That will take you a long time to get it done. Excel is probably the way to go. But what you end up doing is plotting the ln of K versus... Um, the inverse temperature. Okay. Now, because delta H could represent an exothermic reaction or it could represent an endothermic reaction, the Van Hoff equation doesn't necessarily have to have a negative slope. It could end up having a positive slope as well because of how delta H can vary in terms of its sign. In this case, when we plot the ln of big K versus 1 over temperature, we end up getting a plot that has a positive slope. And the line is actually given right here. So the first thing we do is we equate the slope with the negative delta H over R. So we multiply the slope by negative R. And undoubtedly, that means that delta H has to be negative. Just don't forget to change those joules per mole into kilojoules per mole just by dividing by a thousand. So now we know that this is an endothermic process. And another way to put it is that if the slope is positive for the Van Hoff equation, delta H has to be exothermic. If the slope is negative, then delta H has to be endothermic. All right, now, let's go after the entropy. We take the value of the intercept and multiply it by R. And what that means is that the entropy is also negative, negative 229.8 joules per mole Kelvin. All right, so that's just the entropy and the enthalpy. But I'm going to go after every other thermodynamic parameter. The first one to go look for will be delta G, because we know that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Okay, so we know that delta H is negative 104.9. The temperature is 298. Delta S is negative 229.8 joules per mole Kelvin. If you divide that by 1,000, you have 0.2298 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. All right, so negative and negative become positive. 298 times 0.2298 is 68.48. Add that to negative 104.9, and you find out that delta G is negative 36.4 kilojoules per mole. All right, pretty good. Now let's go after the entropy of the universe. We know that that is given by negative delta G of system over temperature. We just found out the value of that. So we change it back to joules per mole, divided by the temperature in Kelvin, and that yields the entropy of the universe. Okay, and finally, the entropy of the surroundings is given by negative delta H of the system over temperature. The 
entropy of the system is your negative 104 point, excuse me, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, your negative 104.9, which we change to joules per mole, so multiply by 1,000, divide by temperature in Kelvin, negative and negative uh, cancel out, so you end up with a positive delta S of surroundings. And if you look carefully, you'll realize, well, delta S of the system was, here it is, negative 229.8, Delta of the surroundings is positive 352, and added together they give you 122.1, meaning that the process is spontaneous. Uh, the other thing to notice too is that delta S of the system is negative, and delta H of the system is negative. So we could find out the reference temperature, delta H over delta S. Make sure to change delta H to joules per mole so that you have the same units. Divide it together, you end up finding out that the reference temperature is. 456.5. Since the enthalpy is negative, you actually want the temperature to be low. Specifically, you want it to be lower than 456.5. So by doing the Bankhoff plot, we actually got everything we needed in terms of thermodynamics. We got the enthalpy, the entropy, the Gibbs free energy, we got the entropy of the universe, of the system, of the surroundings, and we even found out the temperature range in which the reaction is spontaneous. So as you can see, you have a lot of power and a lot of information just from this simple graph. All right, with that being said, I'll stop the video right here. And on the next video, we'll talk about the Irene Polanyi equation.